Hello, and welcome to my pre-algebra review series. This video covers Chapter 3, Section 1, titled Rounding and Estimating. By the end of this video, you will have explored the concept of rounding and estimating decimals. Presented here are both rounding decimals and estimating sums and differences. Please leave a like if you find this video to be helpful. Give your classmates a heads up too. It will more than likely help them, and it certainly will help this channel to be seen by more students. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I read them and do my best to address each as time permits. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Thank you. So let's get into it. Here's an investigation estimating in the real world. Some real world problems only require an estimate for an answer. Others require an exact answer. Decide whether each situation needs an estimate or an exact answer and explain your reasoning. So I'm going to go ahead and wait. Why don't you read over these and think about them and then decide, is this, does this answer to this problem need an exact answer or does it need a, an approximate answer, okay, an estimate? So think about it and say why. Maybe you can even write down why. I'll give you, go ahead and let you stop the video. Okay, so now that you've gone through these and you're back here with me, why don't we go ahead and start these from number one here, okay? It says, a headline noting the number of people living in China. Do we need an exact answer on that or a, an approximate or an estimate? Well, it looks like I think we need an estimate, right? And why? So they, they explain the reasoning because, I mean, from one moment to the next, you'll never know the exact number of people. And, and who cares whether it's uh, an extra three or four here or even thousands or whatever. They have so many people in that country. Anyway, so we're going to say that this is an estimate. So we're going to say an E-S-T, E-S-T, and too many to count. How's that? Okay. The amount of money a babysitter charges. Well, the amount of money a babysitter charges per hour is an exact thing because you have to know if it's so many dollars an hour, you want to know the exact amount, right? So it's exact. E-X-A-C-T. Um, and the reason why is you need to know how exactly how much money to pay. Uh, the width of a window screen. Well, the width of a window screen, if you're going to put something in a window to, uh, and you want to know how wide the window screen is, you, you're probably going to want an exact answer, I'm going to guess. Uh, it depends on what the reason for it. If you're trying to, if the window screen is going to be measured to be fitted with something, exact. If you're just saying, oh, um, I need to know approximately how big that is. You can say I need to know approximately, but if you say I want the width of a window screen, then it's going to be exact. Um, okay, the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Exact or an estimate? Well, it's so far, I think we can say an estimate is probably what we're going to be looking for. It, the mile, whether it's one mile plus or minus, nobody really cares. The hours at soccer practice in one month. Well, you could know the exact number of hours, but generally, oh, I, I, yeah, I was practicing for 20 hours this week or this month. Okay, you know, 21.5 hours, that we don't need that, so it's an estimate. estimate. How about the number of tickets to sell for a play? Well, that to me sounds more like an exact number because you, because if you sell too many, there won't be seats. <clears throat> You'll have what they say is standing room only. Anyways, and that's because you need to know how many seats. How many seats are, okay, available. Okay, good. Okay, objective one, rounding decimals. So they're going to tell us something here. You can round decimal numbers when you do not need an exact value. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, example one, rounding decimals. Problem A, it says round 4.2683 to the nearest tenth. So it's 4.2683 to the nearest tenth. Well, this review assumes that we all know the names of places. We know that the two here is in the tenths place, the six is hundredths, the eight is thousandths, 3 is in the 10,000s. We know that the 4 is in the 1s place. Okay, so they want us to round to the nearest 10th. Well, what does it mean to the nearest 10th? They want to know if this point 2, is this point 2, based on the entire number, closer to 3 or closer to 2? Well, what you do is you look. This is the number of place we're rounding. You look here to this place here, the 100s place, to the first place to the right. If it is greater than or equal to 5, greater than or equal to 5, and it's 6 right now, you round up. Greater than or equal to 5, round up. Else, if it's not greater than or equal to 5, we round down. Okay? So this is going to round up. Because why? The 2, the, the number to the right of the 2 is 6. It's greater than 5 or, or, or equal to 5. We're going to round up. So the new number is going to be 4.3. We round it up. Let's do B. Round 4.2683 to the nearest 1's place. Well, the 1 is right here. These are the 1's place. And... So what do we do? We look to the right, to the right of the place we want to round to, and we say, is this place here, is it greater than or equal to 5? And you tell me, okay, it's 2. It's not greater than or equal to 5. So we're going to round down here, else round down, right over here, round down. So we're going to take this number, is going to be 4, is the answer because we're rounding down. And there's no numbers behind it. It's just four. Okay? So that's the answer to this problem. Example one. Check your understanding. The instructions. Identify and underline the place requested. Okay? We're going to go through these. First, why don't you stop the video and, and you do that yourself. Take these numbers and underline the place. If they're asking for the tenths place as, if, as they are here in A, locate that place and just draw a line under that, that number that is that place. Okay, I'll wait for you. Okay, now that you're done doing that, we're going to work on these together. So the first thing it says is, Identify and underline the place requested, which is 38.41, and they want us to underline the tenths place. Well, the tenths place is right here, the first place to the right of the decimal point. Starts off with ones at the th at the eight, tenths, hundredths, and on and on and on. <clears throat> Excuse me. In B, 0 0.7772, underline the ones place. Well, the ones place is here right here. It's the first place to the left of the decimal point. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. Okay. C, 7,098.56. Underline the tenths. Again, the tenths is the first place to the right of the decimal point. The five. D, 274.9434, underline the thousandths place. Well, this is one, the four is ones, so tenths, hundredths, thousandths. The three is the thousandths place. How about E, 5.025, underline the tenths place. Well, the tenths is the first place to the right of the decimal point. And F, 9.851, underline the hundredths place. The hundredths place is the second place from the decimal point. It goes ones is the one above the decimal point. Then just below the decimal point is the tens. 
then the hundredths, then thousandths. We want the hundredths. So the hundredths is the five, right here, the five. Okay, good job. I'm assuming you got all those correct. Okay, our next objective, objective two, is estimating sums and differences. So we say here that you can estimate a result before you calculate it. Then, if your answer is close to your estimate, you know that it's probably correct. So let's go ahead and look at this and how what we're thinking about here. It says you can write $126 is approximately equal to, that's what that says, $130. You read it as 126 is approximately equal to 130. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to estimate here, right? So we're going to say, well, $126 is about 130. And that would be a good guess as an estimate. So let's do some more of this. Okay, example two, rounding to estimate. Directions say estimate to find whether each answer is reasonable. So they have, a, and like say an A, it's got a calculation where you calculate the answer, and then you estimate the answer. And what they said in the previous slide is that if they're close, then you can assume that your calculation was correct. And if they're not close, then you should probably retry the calculation. So let's go through it. Um, the first, under calculation column here for A, it says 135.95 plus 15.90 and 24.05 is equal to 275.90. And so they chose to estimate. And what? how did they do the estimating? Well, it appears that they're estimating to the tens place, right here, to the tens place. So if you look at 135.95, they go to tens, which is the three here is the tens. The, the number to the right of it is greater than or equal to five. You round up. They did that. 140. 1590, round to tens place. The, they look to the... The, um, the 10, which is a 1 right here, they look to the right of that, which is 5, so it's greater than or equal to 5, so they round that to 2. Here's the 20. Again, they say 2405. They look at the 10's place, and then they look 1 to the right of the 10's place, which is the 4 here, and they say, that is that greater than or equal to 5? No, it is not. So they leave this as it is. So this becomes 20 and stays 20. When you add all these up, they had 275.90, and the estimate, the estimate brought them to 180. Well, we're going to say, mm, this isn't very close. Something is not right in the adding over here. Okay? It's off by at least by 100. So, calculation on B. In fact, it is off by 100. You can see it's off by 100. So, it's, this, if this was 175.90, it would have been 180. It would have been fine. Um, calculation here on this side, 464.90 minus 125.73 equals 339.17. That's what they're saying it is. Let's estimate them and see how close they are. So the estimate says rounding to tenths, or not tenths, excuse me, to tens place. You look at the six, which is the tens place. Here's the tens place. Is the number to the right of it? Greater than or equal to 5? The answer is no. You do not round up. 460. The 6 stays as is. Minus 125.73. Rounding to 10s, we look to the right and we see 5. We know it's greater than or equal to 5. We round the 2 up to a 3. So this becomes minus 130. So 460 minus 130 is 330. And the answer when you calculate it is 339.17. Very close. This is probably the correct answer. And that's the whole idea of this exercise. Okay, example two, checking your understanding. So estimate by rounding. All you have to do is round these and then add the two together. Um, I will wait for you. Once you stop the video, and go try it yourself. When you're done, come on back and we'll do it together. Okay, so now you've had the time to do it. We're going to go through these. So let's estimate 355.302. That's the first number we're going to estimate here. And we're going to, again, as we've, that we had done before, we're going to round to the tens place. So rounding to the tens place, 
The five is right here's the tens. Five is right there. The number to the right of it is a five. It's five or greater, so we're going to round up. So this number is 360. That's, that's it. We're rounding to 360. Plus 204.889. Rounding to tens. When we round to tens, we have a zero here. The four says do not round because it's less than five. So we're going to leave it 200. And that equals what? 360 plus 200 is 560. Let's do it on this side. B, 453.56, rounding to tens. Well, here's the five and the tens place. The ones place, the number to the right of it, is less than five. So we're not going to round this up. It's 450 minus 230.07, we're going to round this number, and since the number, the three, because it's tens place, and it's the, the ones place, the number to the right is zero, it's less than five, we're going to leave it alone, so it's 230. So 450 minus 230 is equal to 220. Okay, good job. Example three, a real world problem. We're going grocery shopping. Carrots cost $2.71. Peppers cost $1.73. And broccoli cost $1.10. Estimate the total cost of the vegetables. So there's a little different approach to doing this. Um, it's the same thing, but you're splitting the numbers up. And especially because you're estimating, you're probably doing it in your head. So the first thing they're saying to do here is, we've written down the numbers here. They're saying, take the front number, the front end digits, which in this case is 2, 1, and 1, and add them together and you get a 4. That's what you're getting here. You're getting the 4. Then they say in round to tenths at the tenth position. So here you have 71, which is 70, 73, which is 70, because this is less than, 1 is less than 5, 3 is less than 5, and 0 is less than 5, but here, so it's 70, 70, and 10 or 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.1. So it's 4. If you're adding up the rounded numbers, 7 and 7 is 14, and 1 is 15. Well, since we've added, we've gone past the decimal, it's 1 and a half, right? 1.5. It's a dollar fifty. You add them up, $5.50. And, $5 and there it is. The total cost is about $5.50. Okay, example three, check your understanding. So we're going to estimate using front-end estimations, the same thing we just did. Uh, I'll go ahead and stop the video and give it a try. See what you come up with. When you get back, we'll do work them together. Okay, so now that you're back, we'll go to A. And what did that front-end estimation say? It said take the leading digits and add them together, and then take the tenths separately and add them together, and then you add the two answers together at the finally at the end. So what do we have here? This is a little different in that we have a 6. This is front end. A 6 and a 2 and a 9. So 6, 2, and 9 is what? 6 and 2 is 8. 9 is 17. So we're at 17 plus what? We're going to take the tenths. So we have a 7 and a 5. So the 5 is 5 or greater. So this 0.7 becomes a 0.8. So it's 0.8 because the 7 rounds up because it was a point, uh, 5 is in this hundredths position. So there's no, here in the 2 is the tenths, tenths position, and there is no number, so we have to assume it's 0, so it does not round. So this is now 0.2, nothing happens, nothing changes. And again here we have 0.5 right here, the tenths place, and the 8 is greater than 5 greater than or equal to 5, so it's going to round up to 0. 0.6. When you add these together now, you get 8 and 8 is 16. Okay, but since there's a decimal point in here, we got to put the decimal point right there. Because you just carry the decimal point down, because we kept the decimal points in the same place. So now you have $17 and $1.60, which ends up being 18.60. Let's do B front or leading digits. We have a 1, we have a 2, and we have a 7. 
1, 2, and 7 gives you a 10, plus what? Taking the tenths. 0, round it up because the hundreds, hundredths place is greater than 5. So it's a 1. So it's point 0.1, one, point 0.1. One. The next one is a point 0.4, and the hundredths place is, is greater than 5. So this is going to be point 0.5. We're rounding up on that one. And now here the 4 does not round the 4 does not round because the hundreds place is less than 5, so it's 0.4. So if we take and we add these together, we have 5 and 4 is 9 and 1 is 10. So here's the 10. And remember the decimal point was right here. We put a decimal point right there. 10 plus 1 is equal to 11. Okay, good job. Example 4, real world problem solving. It says here, you can also use clustering to estimate the sum of several numbers that are all close to the same value. Estimate the total long distance charges for the month of May, June, July, and August shown in the table. Okay, so let's look at the table. And if we're going to say clustering, what they're saying here is look at all your numbers and if they're all kind of close to a common number, we'll pick that nice even round common number and just use that as your estimate for all of the values. So in May, we see that May right here, that May is 1535. And then so it's 15, 15 and a half dollars, 1605. It's close to 15. Okay, here oh 14. So this is below 15, but it's still close to 15. Okay, and 1505 is close to 15. So these two um, July and August are very close to 15. May is pretty close to 15, and June is the only one that's an outlier, but it's eh, close enough to 15. Why don't we go ahead and, instead of moving all the other ones, let's just say $15 is the cluster for all of them. So now it says the, the values all cluster around $15, and there are four of them. So 15 times 4 is $60. So what their estimate here in this clustering estimate is that the total long distance charges is about $60 for the four months. It's kind of a simple way of looking at it. You could have gone, oh, 15 and a quarter, 15, you know, but then that's getting hard. You want a nice even number to, it's just an estimate, right? Trying to come up with something close. Okay, for example, four under check your understanding, uh, estimate using clustering. Well. As before, you can go ahead and do stop the video and try this on your own. See what you come up with, and uh, we'll go. For, when you get back, we'll do it together. Okay. So now that you've given it, given it a shot, let's take a look. Let's try to do some clustering on these. So if we look at four fifty, five twenty, and five fifty five, well, four fifty is below five dollars. Five. This is pretty close to five dollars. This is pretty close. So we're like clustering near the $5 mark. I would say $5 is a fair cluster value. So what are we going to have? We're going to have $5. I say $5 times 1, 2, 3 is equal to $15. I think that looks pretty darn good. We're just, at, we're just estimating. We're not trying to get the exact number. We're just trying to get a good estimate. Let's do B. Oh, there's five values to go on here. So let's let's do some clustering here. So we have 26.7, 26.2, 24, 52, 25, 25, and 23, 29. Well, I'll bet that as you went through this, you know, this 24 here takes you below the 25 value. This is pretty close to 25. This 23 takes you below the 25, but this 26 goes over and this goes over. So if you look at, you've got two of them over 25, two of them, well, you have at least two of them under 25 and one near 25, I'm going to say 25 bucks or 20, maybe it isn't dollars. Let's just say it's, the number is 25. So, and there's five of them. So I'm going to say 25 times five, and that equals what? 125. So, it's approximately 125. Good deal.